This central corridor will be the main input route for equipment and materials that will be used in the construction of the East African crude oil pipeline. It is estimated that investment in the Eco project will cost a whopping 3.5 billion US dollars. The oil refinery, whose construction will run concurrently with the pipeline construction, is also valued at over 3.5 billion US dollars. Is this is a significant opportunity to develop uh, receipt of goods, Ugandan goods at Tanzanian ports, but also to develop the movement of Ugandan goods through Tanzania. There's already been uh, an established route between Dar es Salaam through Mutukura to Kampala, but now this project is based at Tanga. And so the Tanga route, and I don't recall where they join, the Dar es Salaam and the Tanga route must be joining somewhere. But that part from Tanga for, to that joining point, is definitely now an opportunity to also develop that corridor. The other one, of course, is that there are now going to be two ports. You can get things through Tanga, you can get things through Dar es Salaam, and that will make the port uh, more attractive. According to the Petroleum Authority Uganda, the oil and gas project provides a significant opportunity to the central corridor to attract more cargo traffic. It's a very big opportunity because of the volumes of things that are going to be used and imported and transported on that corridor. We will have an opportunity and we can share the volume of these goods, but you will appreciate that this is very significant for these things to be going through Tanzania and uh, the ports to handle such things. So yes, it's a very significant growth opportunity. And as I indicated, there are not many projects this size in this region. Uganda expects the signing of the final investment decision to take place within the first half of 2021. The FID will unleash another level of capital-intensive activities in the vast oil and gas value chain. Key amongst them is transport and logistics. Certainly, Uganda and Tanzania have entered into the agreements they have to enter into. Uganda and Tanzania, respectively, have concluded the agreements called heavy uh, HGAs, which have to be concluded with a pipeline company. Uh, we are now concluding agreements uh, between the shareholders of the pipeline. Because the shareholders of the pipeline are the companies producing the oil, including Uganda's own national oil company, and also the Tanzania Petroleum Development Company. So these companies need to come together and form a pipeline company. And you know, to come together, they will be under an agreement. So those are some of the, that is one of the agreements that is outstanding. There is also a tariff and transportation. Uh, the owners of the crude have to agree with the owners of the pipeline on the methodologies of how they load the crude and how they charge it. As a result of the discovery of oil and gas resources in Uganda and the planned investments to develop these resources, including the ECOP, there is an expectation of a significant economic upturn as well as the creation of new jobs and business opportunities. The reality, however, will be different if the local MSMEs do not have the capacity and experience to participate in oil and gas activities. With the road infrastructure on the central corridor in good condition, especially on the Tanzanian side, what remains is the realigning of the customs and enhancement of the speed of clearing goods at the ports and the borders, argues Anes Rwondo, the executive director, Petroleum Authority of Uganda. Denis Igoa and Robin Yoso for UBC Business.